a Division I standout. Extremely entertaining to watch, uh, very dynamic. A soccer superstar. He just knew the game, he had great vision for the field. Fast and light on his feet, Rene Hernandez had one goal. He was determined, he was hungry. And nothing could stand in his way. Because he, all he wanted his, since he was little was being a professional soccer player, always. That's always, I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. From high school varsity to junior college to Cal State Northridge, Rene led his teams to state and tournament championships. I was very happy, as a father. I was very happy of him. He was so good, a uh, coach would, would actually call us because they thought he could actually go all the way, all, all the way, play soccer all the way. This Rene tiene todo para jugar profesional. Y como le digo, sobre de eso le dieron su beca y aunque en muchas partes de aquí Estados Unidos. And on a soccer field in Los Angeles, Rene met the love of his life. He's the type of person. He's funny, but not loud funny in front of like a big group. He's the type of person that he'll make you laugh one on one. I really cared about her. He would feel something in my heart, and that's something that no one ever made me feel like. No one would ever make me feel like that. I was in love with Deirdre because her personality, her dreams, and she liked soccer as well. Both were college soccer stars with a competitive drive to win. He was like, Des, you could play better than that. And he told me, like, you need to step it up. I think it was a, like a meant to be relationship. When they learned they'd soon be parents, Rene did the unthinkable. He set soccer aside. He took a break from college and worked to support his growing family. I loved him with all my heart. And just knowing that we were starting a family, it was just, I felt very complete. Baby Julian was born, and Renee couldn't wait to show him how to kick a ball. It was amazing. It was the happiest time of my life has ever felt. He, as a dad, he's an amazing father. He just, he loved to play with Julian outside and kicking the ball and, and would just guide him. He had big dreams for his little family. He was ready to finish college and the head coach at Cal Poly Pomona recruited him to the soccer team. I had plans to go, go to college to play soccer and somehow be able to provide for my kids. And I, it, I didn't get to, to follow my dreams. February 24th, 2014. Rene had just spent the evening with his parents and was on his way back home to Desiree and Julia. As he drove home, his Toyota Scion hit the median and landed across several of the northbound lanes of the 605 freeway. A witness, Alfred Robert Salazar Jr., stopped to help. He told the CHP Rene was conscious, calling out for help, and trying to remove his seatbelt. Quote, he was able to talk. He said, sir, please get me out of here. Cars and trucks, including a big rig, were able to safely maneuver around Rene and his disabled vehicle. But before anyone could come to Rene's rescue, a semi-tractor trailer slammed into him. Police found that driver at fault. Emergency crews found Rene trapped and slumped in his vehicle. He had diminished breathing and signs of severe brain damage. Emergency room doctors at USC Medical Center discovered Rene had a left clavicle fracture, a compromised airway, blown pupils, brain hemorrhages, seizures, and a spinal cord injury. Layer by layer, medical imaging revealed a terrible truth. Rene had a severe traumatic brain injury with brain hemorrhages, surrounding edema, and scalp hematomas. He was laying there, um, eyes closed, head 
a swollen. Bebé lo que él estaba como, como muerto. René was in a coma and on life support. Y los doctores nos dijeron, él no va a despertar, él no va a vivir, desconectenlo. And they said that just to give up on him, let him let it go and donate his organs to, to the hospital. But René's family refused to give up. They would not take him off life support. Cuando miramos el carro, fue cuando dijimos, Dios, it is it's a milagro. Este es un milagro que él esté todavía aquí con nosotros. Le dije, mi hijo, tú tienes que luchar, tú tienes que levantarte, tú tienes que salir de esa, de este coma, de esa cama. And in a cruel and heartbreaking twist, while René lay dying in the ICU, Desiree brought new life into the world. Alone, without René, she gave birth to their second child, a little boy named Alexis. Having to, to have the baby by myself, our second child by herself, myself, and him not be there and experience all of that. I just told him, I'm like, Renee, you need to be strong. You need to do this for me, for Alexis, for Julian, and for this baby, because we need you. It took days, weeks, and then months. I would cry every single day because I just felt like, where is he? I felt like I was just waiting to see when I would see the person I knew again. Somehow, Renee opened his eyes. Hello? Hi? And he actually woke up. He woke up and said something. Say, good job, puppy. Good job, puppy. After two months in the hospital and three months in a rehab facility, Rene went home. He cannot be left alone. I basically feel like a baby again. My whole right side is pretty much doesn't work. Like my face, my face to my toes. One thing that I could, I could tell you 100% it changed my parents' life for completely. Cambiarlo, bañarlo. Darle de comer, acompañarlo a caminar, en las terapias, doctores. He wakes up, mom, can you take me to go to the restroom? Mom, can you put on my contacts? Y la cayó encima de la silla. En su mano se las se quebró dos dedos. My mom's scared to leave him by himself. That's a, somebody always has to be here with them, because we don't they don't trust what he'll do. Because he's not properly thinking right. He really can't function on his own. Can't navigate the world on his own. Can't go back to school. Can't work. Dr. David Lechuga is a neuropsychologist who's been treating people with brain injuries for more than 30 years. He says Renee's attention, memory, and language skills are severely impaired. The, the words, I know what to, do, to say, but it's just that I don't, it doesn't come out. He's going to be agitated. He's going to be easily annoyed. He's going to get angry. This is some of the reaction to what's happened to him and also his brain injury has changed his personality. Always upset, yelling. His, like, he's like, every, every little thing, small thing bugs him all the time now. Everything turned like, like a complete 180. It was just, there was so much more um, sadness, I think, and frustrations. There was those mood swings he would have of just being mad and angry. Mad, sad. I, stop, I sometimes end up crying just because. Desiree tried to be a full-time mother to her children and a round-the-clock caregiver for Renee. The stress nearly killed her. Babe, I'm video recording you. At some point, I did feel like I wanted to kill myself because I just didn't know how to get through this. I didn't know how to just make anything better anymore. It, it, it was killing me inside. It really was. 
In the most difficult decision of her life, Desiree separated from Renee. Each of them lives with their parents now. No, sit down, sit down. Things changed completely for me. The mother of my kids ended up leaving me. Seven, eight, nine. Renee now sees his children on weekends. Get them up. Physically, he's unable to pick them up or carry them or take them for a drive or even go for a walk without help. And Julian is old enough to ask why. He was like, Papi, you're going to come home with us. And then I tell her, I, I don't know what to say. I said, I say, no, I have to stay here. He is severely depressed. He thinks about suicide, but there's no plan. You have a gentleman, young man, who's profoundly impaired, but he's intact enough to know how profoundly impaired he is. Dr. Lechuga says Renee needs ongoing treatment in a brain injury program, family therapy sessions, evaluation by a neuropsychiatrist, and a 24-hour caregiver. What will be of in a future that we will have? Devastated by this tragedy, Renee and his family will never be the same. They're all affected, they're all traumatized, and, and they will be for the rest of their lives. Dreams destroyed. You know, the skies are the limits. He could have turned into an all-conference player, maybe all regional players. Renee's children will never know the driven athlete and doting father he used to be. The accident basically took away my family. That's the most important thing that I felt it took away. It, it might have took away soccer or uh, other stuff like that, but the, the most painful situation that happened was taking away my family. They lost a, a happy dad, a happy person. They lost a great athlete. They lost someone who can be there for them and take them, drive them, take them places. They lost, they lost a great man. 